says that she loves me Isn't it lovely when the one who loves me is the one who loves me? I was thinking about the lack of knowledge on purpose, you know, and so as Morgan Freeman, and you can tell like there's an anger in discovering this at his age, you know, so the, the CBS Sunday morning piece takes us into the Library of Congress and they 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 with gloves on open this book that was written by Tres Vant Anderson, born in Charlotte, North Carolina, attended Johnson C. Smith College. I need to give the genealogy, but he left before he graduated. Um, and he was a features editor at his college newspaper, the University Student. And in the nineteen thirties, he even worked as a public publicist for Billy Eckstein, right as he was starting his career. But Anderson became a journalist, and he went on. The battlefield with the 761st Tank Battalion. I think he was in the battalion as well as chronicling, but he wrote a book, Come Out Fighting, the epic tale of the 761st Tank Battalion, 1942 to 1945. And it's this book that has become the launch pad for Morgan Freeman's um, documentary. Now, there have been other stories told about this battalion, but they're not a household name. And they should be right up there with Tuskegee, right up there with the Tus Tuskegee Airmen who, again, and you start to, when you piece these stories together, you start to realize much like the Civil War, there would be no victory, <laughs> especially not on the German side, maybe the Japanese side. There would be no victory without the fighting Africans. You think about the, the way in which Hitler was able to, like Miss Pac-Man, gobble up space and time and they were marching marching to france and you understand that this battalion in particular on the front lines because where else would you put negroes you know your precious life you're not going to put it on the front lines but these black folk fought in the air and they fought on the land as if their life depended on it fought for freedoms they didn't did not have themselves fought for freedoms they did not have themselves in the united states fought to liberate concentration camps. I've talked about this before. These black people pushed Hitler back to the point that the Nazi generals were like, I have never seen courage like this before. Fought for a country that had them relegated as second-class citizens, didn't even want them in the army. And you think about that. There's civil war. The North doesn't win without the liberate, the folk that walked off plantations and picked up arms. That's a fact. And if even if you want to question the fact, common sense would tell you, <laughs> especially with the Civil War, that folk are going to fight like their lives depend on it. Not the folk that were commissioned into a war that they didn't even care about because 90 percent of the white folk that fought didn't own any enslaved people. They didn't own people. So they were actually fighting for something that they for, for an ideal, much like folk that vote Republican today. You're fighting for an ideal you'll never have because the, the carrot is dangled that maybe one day I'll be as rich as Donald Trump. I want that or as Elon Musk. That's the aspiration. So I'm going to fight these Mexicans, these black people, all these people, because I want that ideal. That ideal is everything. They they coerce people to fight to preserve slavery when 90 percent of the people who were fighting for the Confederates did not own people. Those folks stayed home because, you know. They're not going to put their bodies on the line. You understand what I'm saying? Except for, you know, Lee and them. But even that general, he, didn't he survive? Like, was he on the front lines? Anyway, who's on the front lines? Black people picking up arms. Millions of them. To the point that there became a Freedmen's Bank started with the funds from the black people who, this is what I'm talking about. We don't tell history in this country. We don't, because if you did, the dots would line up and then things would make sense. And then we wouldn't have to sit with the myth, the myth making of mediocrity that then becomes the standard. No, it's a bad facsimile of something that was really great. I was thinking about this because I'm watching this uh, TV series Domina on uh, Amazon Prime. And it's and at first I wasn't going to watch it because it's in that Roman Empire space. But even in there, I was like. Hey, you know, they're sitting on toilets back then that they discovered first in Egypt because the aqueducts that you see in Rome, 
you you know that they were first in Egypt, in Kemet, in Nubia. People had waterways, right, to flush things out. They were doing autopsies. They were they had herbs and medicines that to this day we still use. And then you think about the Roman ruins, right? Well, the pyramids still stand. You understand? Pyramids still stand, but the Roman Empire in ruins, right? They're ruins because while you 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 could see what people are doing and you imitate them, you erase the genius because you don't collaborate, you rather eliminate and then steal, but you don't really know the source and the root of how this thing has actually built, like that obelisk that I was talking about. It's fascinating to me. And I look at America much the same way. Even our democracy, it is a facsimile of something. But I know this constitution say, said that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. You know, and uh, if we're in, endowed with these inalienable rights of life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness, then it, then those words were written. So so shall it be done. We must make that happen. And I'm going to keep saying that because I believe in words. They have power. And if we say it and embody them, then we will make that. So I'm not begging you for my humanity. I'm going to tell you what it is. So I'm, I'm watching this piece uh, on CBS Sunday morning with Morgan Freeman. And I'm going to play a little clip from it because I think it's instructive as we go into the rest of the show today. Um, but Smith, play, play the clip. This is the history of the 761st by Tresvant and Anderson. A young black reporter, Tresvant Anderson, accompanied the 761st as it fought its way across Europe. Had you ever heard of him before you started working on this? No. No. He deserves to be better known. All of this deserves to be better known. All of this. Landing in Normandy, they fought their way across France, Luxembourg, Belgium, and into Germany. Freeman has set out to make that happen with a documentary about the 761st, also known as the Black Panthers. Crap bubbles all in there. You see the little dog spot, right? There? Yeah, I see it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's right there. Feel it. Yeah. And some more that steel. It's Which there. will air on the History Channel, complete with a cameo appearance by Lloyd Austin, the nation's first black Secretary of Defense. So, Morgan, it's great to have you here. Although, around here, to be honest with you, you know, the whole deep, smooth voice thing, that's really my thing. <laughs> So what struck you most about their story? Well, the thing that would strike anybody, I think, is the fact that all of this is true and nobody knows about it. Why don't we know all of American history? Right. Why don't we? Morgan Freeman's mad. <laughs> He's mad about this. Ooh, you know, um, a lot of us get angry when we discover something like a Henrietta Lacks, her story. You get angry when you you find out about Charles Stinney. You, you, yeah, a lot of people are angry when they found out about Emmett Till. You know, you get angry because you didn't know and you're angry at yourself because you didn't know. But you really should be angry at a nation that purposefully hides information to build myths around myths. <laughs> to build myths around stories that aren't true, you diminish other stories. This is not black history. This is history, period. And let Alabama and Arkansas and Tennessee and Texas and tech and, and Florida, all of them do do what they can with the books and the curriculum. But if we start to change the language around what is and is not history in terms of that it's history, not bl black history, the fact that we made it black history. And I'm going to talk to Michael Harriet about this. I don't know if he agrees or not. We allowed them to put it in a box over here so that at any point in time it could be diminished or eliminated, right? But if it's woven into the fabric of America, if it is just history, then what do you do with that? You have to include it. So 761st, that's history. And Morgan Freeman's doing a piece on it. And I'm going to lean in. And and I remember the first time I heard Charles Loeb, another journalist, correspondent during World War II. On the other side, he was examining what was, were the impacts of uh, what was the impact of the nuclear bombs that America dropped on Japan. And while The New York Times was louding and praising, which is redundant, the the act of the United States of America, because it was it ended the war. Charles Loeb, a human being, said, I'm going to look at it in terms of how it will impact the human being. So the New York Times is nothing. It's not going to do anything to these people in Japan. And Charles Loeb, who had a medical background, he actually studied science, 
which is another thing I'm saying about people who have a microphone or a pen to write or, or your eyes to see should have some grounding in things that they know. You shouldn't just get to talk because you can read a teleprompter. You shouldn't. You should not just get to talk or write or be out there without any deep knowledge. Charles Loeb was a scientist who said, no, 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 I studied this. This is going to be really bad. He, he, he said the, the radiation will sicken the people, is going to kill people. His perspective uh, was cast aside until, you know, it was verified. He contradicted the War Department of the United States of America, the Manhattan Project, and the New York Times. This one little reporter, Charles Loeb, L-O-E-B, he should be a household name. Science would prove him right. His reporting not only challenged the official government line, but it also echoed the skepticism of many black Americans worried that race had played a role in the United States decision to drop a, an experimental weapon on Japan. You want to understand us as people? You need to understand that even then black people were like, what? You, you ain't dropping bombs on Germany, but you're going to drop a bomb, a nuclear bomb on civilians? You didn't do it in Tokyo or hit their 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 war to, war area. You hit human regular people getting ready for breakfast. Black people didn't like that because they could see it happening to us. Black clergy and activists sympathize openly with the victims of the bombs. Why? Because we're human beings first. Human beings first. In order to make a more perfect union, we have to be human beings first. <laughs> Isn't it lovely when the one who loves things is the one